Hey, Binge fans, back it up here with my co-host, Coach Ruby, for another episode of The Binge and Wild Card Weekend Picks. Coach, welcome. Thanks for having me. Glad to be back, and uh, I'm looking forward to going over Super Wild Card Weekend. Perfect. Me too. So we have some uh, horses in this race, me and you, so we'll look at those two games last. We have some really good wild card matchups this week, and we should see some really good games. All six games, Coach, are rematches from the regular season. All three Florida teams are in for the first time since 1999. And in this year's playoffs, you have four quarterbacks from the class of 2020. So without further ado, you ready to do this? I'm ready. Let's go. Let's start in the AFC with our first matchup. We're going to first start with the Bengals hosting the Ravens on Sunday night. Bengals finished 12 and 4, 6 and 1 at home. Ravens finished 10 and 7, 5 and 4 on the road and they split their two meetings this year with the home teams winning each game. Lamar Jackson, he's missed the last 5 games and during that stretch um, the Ravens scored less than 17 points in any one of those games. The Ravens are unsure if Jackson's going to play probably not going to play and they're going to rely on their third string quarterback, Anthony Brown. And meanwhile, the meanwhile, the Bengals are hot over the last two months, excluding that bills game. They've won eight consecutive games. They got a great quarterback in burrow. We know that um, 4,500 yards, 35 TDs against 12 INTs. And he had a passer rating of just under one Oh one coach. Tell me what you think about this game and what's your pick for the game. Well, I guess I'll, I'll do my picks at the end of my little uh, explanation on why I'm making those picks. Um, the, I mean, the big thing in this game is the quarterback situation for the Ravens. Uh, you take Lamar Jackson out of there, and the Ravens are a completely different team. I believe they're averaging 17 points fewer when he's not playing. Um, so that's a lot of points to make up for against the offense like the Bengals. Um, the Ravens' defense, however, those two matchups against the Bengals this year, they kept Burrow uh, at a mediocre 216 yards per game passing in those two games, um, which is an interesting stat. But um, I have to go with the Bengals on this one. Uh, I just think the Bengals' firepower is too much. Not having Lamar Jackson there, it's uh, it's not going to benefit the Ravens at all. And uh, the Bengals, like you said before, before the uh, Bills game, you know, they're eight in a row now. So they're just on fire. And I expect them to keep on fire into the divisional round for this one. Nice. So you're going with the Bengals. For me, Bengals at home this year with an eight and one record this season. Burroughs thrown against a 26 ranked defense against the pass. Bengals are on their hot streak. They haven't lost in two months, like you said. That will yeah. continue in this game. They'll beat the Ravens, take the Bengals in this one. I think we're both in agreement on that. Yeah. Let's move to a very interesting game. The Jaguars hosting the Chargers. They met in week three. Jags won that game 38 to 10 on the road. So I think the Chargers are looking for some payback here. Jags finished nine and eight, five and three at home. Chargers finished 10 and seven, but only five and four on the road. You got two great quarterbacks here. You got Trevor Lawrence. He's really improved in his sophomore season. He doubled his TDs and cut his INTs in half. They also have a great weapon in the backfield in Eddian, 1,100 plus yards this year, five, over a five yard average per carry. He's also a threat out of the backfield, catching 35 passes. But on the other side of the field, you got, and, and I love this guy, Justin Herbert, threw for 4,700 yards this year. Uh, 25 TDs versus 10 INTs, rating of 93, which is the third year in a row he went finished over 90. And they also have a good option out of the backfield, Austin Eckler. He had over 900 yards on the ground. He caught 107 balls out of the backfield for over 700 yards. What are you going with in this game? Uh, so, again, I was trying to – I was tr I'm trying to look at this – from a lot of different perspectives. I love this game because I think it's uh, showcasing the future of the league at the quarterback position. Um, Absolutely. I think uh, Lawrence, uh, I think Lawrence, uh, you know, it was a detriment to him to have uh, Urban Meyer coaching him the first couple of years. And 
Uh, now he finally got back on track with a good coach. Uh, Peterson, you know, even though he's ousted from Philadelphia, he's still a good coach, and he's proven that this year with the uh, Jaguars offense. Um, one stat that I do think is uh, interesting and kind of made me come up with my pick for this game is the uh, drop balls for each team. Hmm. <laughs> um, the Jaguars, in this case, uh, just some stats here. Um Say Jones, who I believe is the Jaguars' leading receiver, has 13 drops. Kirk is their next receiver. He's got seven drops. Marvin Jones and Engram have both dropped the ball five times. Wow. And meanwhile, the Chargers for Herbert, uh, Allen and Williams combined, their two leading receivers combined for a total of three drop passes. And uh, Eckler and uh, Everett, their tight end, had nine each. So uh, the advantage definitely goes to Herbert there. Um, I think – Herbert is just a little bit more uh, experienced with a, a, a better offensive plan because he's been doing the same thing for the last few years, like you said. Yeah. And I, I got to go with the Chargers with this one. I think Jacksonville made a lot of strides this year. And uh, I look forward to them being in the playoffs next year, but I'm going to go with the Chargers. Man, that's some interesting uh, observations there. Um, so for me, weather, I don't think weather is going to be a, a, a an issue here since both are warmer weather teams. I, I personally just like Herbert a little better than Lawrence. He's leading a very highly ranked passing team, and he's going up against a Jags defense that's ranked 27th. So he's got the advantage there. I think that Jags defense is going to keep Lawrence playing catch up all day. I hate picking road teams in the playoffs. But I'm taking the Chargers for the win on this one. So that's two two in a row we're in agreement on. Nice. Okay, let's shift to the NF- NFC. This is where you live during the season, right? I just I just left my home in the AFC. You're, we're in the NFC for two games. First, we have the Niners hosting the Seahawks. They finished 13 and four this year, eight and one at home. So great home record. Seahawks nine and eight, average 500 team, four and four on the road. The Niners beat the Seahawks twice this year already. Uh, so third time is usually a tough game, but they've beat them twice already. Niners' current winning streak stands at 10. Uh, Seahawks struggle at the end of the season, finishing 3-5. and five. They have Geno Smith, great story, but he struggled in both his games against the Niners. He totaled, for both games combined, only a TD and an interception in both games. And of course, you got that quarterback, the rookie quarterback with the Niners, Brock Purdy, going eight and one this year. And in his eight starts that he won, the Niners averaged 35 points a game and they scored less than 33 only once. Wow. So are you going to go with Geno here or and the Hawks? Are you going <laughs> to are you pretty sure that the Niners are going to win here? Did you see what I just nice. did? There? Nice, nice word play. I like it. Um Again, this one, this one, uh, I chose. I mean, I kind of, I kind of understood who I was going to pick going into this game, um, but just something that might help the fans out there to kind of decide and look into this game a little bit more in depth. Um, the first thing is starting field position. Uh, the 49ers are leading the league in starting field position. They're starting at the average of the 30.9 yard line, wow. um, whereas their opponents are starting at the 25.6. Um, it's a five yard difference, but if you look at it overall, it's a huge difference in a game when I feel that Seattle is going to be basically fighting to keep up with this 49ers offense and trying to deal with the 49ers defense. That's first in the league. Um, the other interesting fact about this game is the 49ers lead the league in turnover differential at plus 13 and both mm-hmm. those matchups against the Seahawks. Um, the Niners had turnovers in Seahawks uh, side of the field and uh, made short work and made touchdowns out of them. Um, so I really think this might be the only blowout of the weekend. Um, I think the Niners are just going to be way too much for Seattle to handle. So I'm going yeah, with the Niners I, I, for this one. Totally agree with you on, on on all those points and on your pick. This is an easy one for me. I'm going to call this my black chip lock of the weekend, okay? Wow. Purdy wow. continues to roll. Niners get their 11th in a row in a 30-plus point contest here. So I totally agree with everything you said. So three for three so far. We're lining up here. Let's see on this next one. This is another really interesting uh, match up here. We have the Bucks hosting the Cowboys. So the Bucks finished eight and nine. So they're sub five hundred here. Five and four at home, 
Cowboys finished with a good record, 12 and five, only four and four on the road, though. So they really earned their keep at home going eight and one. Cowboys are coming off a terrible loss to Washington. These two teams met in week one, and the Bucs beat the Cowboys 19 to three in Dallas. So, you know, they, they have experience going into Dallas and winning this year. Um, what's interesting is since Thanksgiving, Dak has thrown 11 interceptions and the Cowboys still went five and two over that, over that span, but he still threw 11 interceptions. If he's off, they could always turn to uh, Elliot against an average run defense, but on the other side of the ball, the bucks will live and die with your favorite quarterback. I know you're not going to admit this, but <laughs> Tom Brady, Brady oh, finished God. third in passing yards this year. You know, you kept hearing, He's off, he's this, he's that. But statistically, he had 25 TDs. He was third in yardage. He only had nine INTs and almost a 91 yard, a 91 passer rating, all at 45 years old. I mean, those are Jay Schrader like numbers, right? So here's one other quick almost. thing, too. Another, another uh, back it up bite here. Uh, Brady's playoff record with the Bucks, just two quick points five and one overall, undefeated two and oh in wild card gains. So, I know how much you dislike Brady. I'm equally confident that you cannot stand the Cowboys being a Giants fan. Who are you going with in this one? Uh, this is uh, this is the game that I didn't want to pick just because I don't want to root for either one of them. <laughs> but being the professional broadcaster that I am, you know, I did you look go. everything over. Um, the interceptions from Thanksgiving with Dak, I think, is uh, is a huge thing. He um, I don't know. There's 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 two there's two sides to the Cowboys. You got the team that shows up and they just completely dominate. They look like a well-oiled machine and just destroy whatever's in front of them. And then there's the team that loses to the Washington Commanders the last week of the season when they needed to win the game and you know completely don't show up. Dak threw a, a horrible pick six in that game. Um, Brady, you know. I, as you mentioned, I don't like Brady. Uh, it's, it's hard to root again. It's hard to root for him. Um, but he is he is 45 years old. He's playing in the NFL at quarterback, and he's playing at an elite level. So I'll give him that. Um, to to go uh, to go with some of the stats that you presented, I just want to I want to introduce a couple other ones. So Brady finished third overall in passing yards, um, but he was also first overall in attempts. Um, which, you know, again, being 45 years old, leading the league in attempts is pretty impressive in itself, but that also made him 30th overall in yards per attempt. Um, you know, and just as an example, Mahomes, uh, finished the league, I believe first in passing yards. He averaged 8.1 yards per attempt where Brady was 6.4 yards per attempt. Uh, I think going along that line, it might kind of seem like I'm talking negatively about him. But this also plays directly into Tom Brady's game, right? High accuracy passing, dinking and dunking, getting the ball out quick. So, you know, he's he's still doing well for what he's doing out there. Um, the other thing is with the Cowboys, and you mentioned uh, Zeke, you know, with the running game. You know, we can't forget about Pollard, who, uh, they're, you know, he's considered yeah. the second back in Dallas, but yeah. he led he led Dallas in rushing. Right. Um, his average is, uh, I don't want to say twice as much, but his, he's averaging 5.1 yards of carry. Zeke's 3.8. Zeke kind of goes in there for the extra TDs. He got a couple more touchdowns in him this season. Um, and then on the other side of the ball with the Bucks running game, both the running backs, Fournette and White, are averaging less than four yards of carry. Uh, so it, it's it's going to be a lot for the Bucks to overcome. Uh, Brady has had some uh, late game magics, especially towards the end of the season. Their offense has been almost non-existent in the first half of games, but in the second half, he comes alive. He's been getting some great wins for them. Uh, it's kind of a gamble with this pick, but I'm I'm going to go with the Cowboys only hmm. because I don't think I don't think the Cowboys are going to have two horrible games in a row. And they had got the one out of the way last week, and I think I think they'll be able to just barely pull it over the Bucks. I think it's going to be close, but I'm going with the Cowboys on this one. Okay, yeah, I mean, I I equally had a hard time picking this one. 
you know, logic to me tells me that the Cowboys are the better team, but they were average on the road, right? Four and four on the road, eight and one at home, and their only home loss was to the Bucks. But I have a hard time picking against Brady here. Uh, home game, end of his career, gave up so much this year to put himself in this position. Yeah, I understand it's an eight and nine record. It's not great, but it's Brady, right? And yeah. uh, so I think I'm going to go with the Bucks here. I'm going to take the Bucks. It's our first difference in in picks, which is good. So we'll be watching the scoreboard on this one. So I'm going to take the Bucks. You got the boys. Um, it should be a good game. We'll see if uh, Brady can work some magic here. All right, here we yeah. go. Last two games. We'll start back in the AFC with uh, my horse. Um, wow. Ready for these two? Here we go. Yeah. Bills, Dolphins. Bills hosting the Dolphins. Bills finished 13 and 3, 8 and 1 at home. Dolphins finished 9 and 8. They had that up and down record all year, only 3 and 6 on the road. This is their third meeting this year, obviously, because they're divisional opponents. Um, Dolphins won the first contest in Miami. They lost in mid December by three. They should have won that game, but they also had a healthier team at that point. They, the, the Dolphins backed into the playoffs, had an ugly win against the Jets, 11 6. They had help from the Bills, who had to beat the Patriots, given the Dolphins a playoff berth. They got that. We all know how good Josh Allen is, um, the quarterback for the Bills. The Dolphins quarterback situation, completely unsettled. Tua is not going to play. As of this uh, episode, he's been ruled out. Mostert is likely hurt as well, broken thumb. He's probably not going to play. And the O's line, the the Dolphins offensive line, is is hurting pretty bad. So what's your thoughts on this game? Man, I didn't know about Mostert, so yeah, that's interesting to know too. Yeah, that's uh, that's a, that's a and, big loss. So he's definitely out of the game, Mostert. Uh, it's from what I've been reading. It looks like he's not going to play. And he had over a hundred yards against them in in the in the game in December. He was running really hard, and he was running hard against the Jets, and he, he broke his yeah. thumb. And uh, they have a couple of good backs as backups, but I, I love him. And you had mentioned him, you know couple of years ago when we started playing strat you mentioned how good this guy is and you were right yeah. i never realized it until he got on miami yeah he's fast uh yeah. he was part of the he was part of that uh couple seasons there with the niners where the niners just seemed to be picking great running backs and they were just yeah. dropping them left and right and other teams you know took them on and they were awesome and uh if you remember the classic show the league uh for fantasy league you know they gave him the nickname uh must start because he was always uh, you there know, you getting yardage right. and everything. So um, that's a huge loss for the Dolphins. Um, before I go into my final pick, I'll, I'll let loose on a couple other stats on this thing too. Uh, the whole two a thing, you know, it's a huge disadvantage for the uh, Dolphins. Um, right. it, from what I was reading before, uh, it looks like Thompson's going to be starting. And, uh, you know, he's only completing about 50% of his passes. The Bills at home are a really tough team. Um, with everything happening with DeMar and everything, that crowd is just going to be so fired yeah. up. Yeah, uh, it's going to be it's going to be a crazy atmosphere. Um, I just don't. I don't. The only thing that gives the Dolphins hope for me is uh, at this point is just the fact that Josh Allen uh, he does have a lot of red zone turnovers. He tries to push the ball hard in there to just get those scores, and sometimes you know he gets a little. It's almost like he's getting a little too excited because he's such a big, powerful guy yeah, and he's throwing yeah. the ball so hard. And he'll just try to squeeze something in when he shouldn't. And, and, you know, that's where the turnovers come over. But the Bills offense obviously can make up for those turnovers. Yeah. And with Tua being out, with Bridgewater being out, and now with Mostert being out, um, you know, I think the Dolphins have a bright future with their head coach. I think he's kind of a mad scientist out there. Um, I hope Tua can come back and, you know, play normal football with these head injuries and everything. So I think the future is bright. They might have backed into the playoffs, but they're not going to back it up in the playoffs. I think the Bills are going to win this one. <laughs> you're going Bills. You're going against my team. Real nice. Okay. So, <laughs> look, I, I understand everybody, you know, down on Skylar Thompson. I actually like him. I think he manages the game well. He gets out of pressure well. He doesn't make mistakes. But that's a lot to ask for a third string quarterback in his third it's gonna be his third start in his career to go into Buffalo and beat the Bills. Yeah. I, I, I don't see it. Maybe we'll see because they can run the ball. 
And they did that against the Bills, and they did it against the Jets pretty well. As you know, also maybe we'll see a lot of Wildcat. You put Waddle or or the Cheetah back there. Maybe you throw them off a little bit that way. If they could contain the run, to your point, maybe get a pick or two. Maybe Xavier Howard shows up and gets me a pick, like he did a few years back, where he was hot in the league and led the league in uh, interceptions. You know, weather forecast. I looked it up. I said, oh no, cold weather game for the Dolphins later in the year, but it's going to be you know, mid thirties. So I think it won't really be an issue for them, but it pains me to say this in the end bills win this game going away. I I, I just can't see how Miami, you know, at least we got into playoffs first, first time since 17, but I know we haven't won one since 2000, but at least they have a building block here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. The last one, the one that we've been texting each other all week about, right? Saving the best for last. Um, Saving the best for last. Big blue against the Vikings. So the Vikings hosting the Giants. Vikings finished 13 and four, eight and one at home. Vikings average margin of victory, though, in those eight wins was only six and a half points. So they play it, they play it close all the time. Giants nine, seven, and one this year, four and four on the road. This is their second meeting of the season, right? They played on Christmas Eve, Mm -hmm. 61-yard field goal on the last play by the Vikings to win that game. The Vikings do have some offensive line issues that could hamper their running game, but the Giants D against the runs ranked 27th. On the other side, you got Saquon, who um, is going to be going against a Viking defense that has allowed an average of 130, 138 yards over their last six weeks. So they have a they have a bit of a, a wrinkle here that they could exploit. Both teams have solid quarterbacks. You got Cousins and you got Jones. I really like Daniel Jones. Cousins is good. What I found interesting is that both teams this year were tied for second most penalties, right? They had 111 flags thrown. It's a lot of laundry during the year. And in their last meeting, the Giants racked up seven. The Vikings only racked up two. So I know you're a big Giants fan. You just picked against my team. I actually picked my my team's opponent. Are you going to be a homer or are you going to go for the Vikings? Let's see what you got here. All right, so... Going into this game, this is the first playoff game for the Giants since 2016. I think I'm pretty positive. They signed Landon Collins, former safety, former all-pro safety for the Giants uh, this past season. Uh, They actually signed him like two games, I think, when there was two games left in the season. So he came back, and he is the only player from that playoff team, I believe. Hmm. So – Okay. Um. He is uh, he's the only one playing in this game uh, from that old playoff team. He's the only one with real playoff experience as far as I'm concerned. The last meeting, you said the Giants had the seven penalties. The Vikings had two. Uh, the Vikings played, you know, as far as I'm concerned, probably one of their cleanest games, obviously, because they only had the two penalties. They got right. Jefferson, who's, uh, you know, just the best receiver in the league as far as I'm concerned. Um, and the Giants still only lost on last second 61-yard field goal. Um, I think the Giants, as long as they can keep those mistakes, you know, out of the game, I think they're going to be able to pull this off, and I'm picking the Giants. Um, the other thing, too, is both of these teams, uh, you were mentioning about the margin of victory, uh, both of these teams are really successful in one-score games. Uh, the Vikings are a little bit better than the Giants, obviously. The uh, Vikings are 11-0 and in one-score games this year, which is ridiculous. The Giants are 8-3-1, and um, which is ridiculous in itself. Uh, yeah. But I just think the, I think the Giants are going to pull this out. I don't trust Cousins' uh, nationally televised record. Uh, anytime the national television is on him, he does not perform well at all. I believe he started his career 0-9 on Monday Night Football. Um, so this is this is just a lot of pressure for the Vikings. I think they're expecting a lot, and I think the Giants are going to be able to shut them down, and I hope they do. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so first, let me say out of the gate, I'm rooting for the Giants, all right? I hate the Jets, obviously. Always root for the Giants, and they have a really good shot to win this game. Um, to me, it's going to come down to two things. One is discipline, limit the penalties, don't kill drives. Don't cost your uh, don't cost your team any yardage. Second is home field advantage. 
Vikings are used to playing it close to home. So late in the fourth quarter, I don't think they're going to, they're going to get tight. And as I mentioned before, I just don't like road teams in the playoffs. So I'm hesitatingly, if that's even a word, <laughs> I'm picking the Vikings mainly because of that home record. So go with the, so it's going to be an interesting, uh, Interesting weekend. What's what's good about the weekend too is one o'clock game on Sunday is the Finns and the four thirty game is the Giants. So I guess we'll know what both of us will be doing all day on Sunday, yeah. right? So uh, <laughs> any closing comments? Uh, you know, I'm just looking forward to this weekend. Uh, I hope that this uh, in depth analysis uh, gives somebody out there some information and helps them make their playoff picks as well. Um, but I think I think we did a good job with this and. Uh, you know, I just – I hope the Giants can pull through and make it to the division round. And, uh, you know, I, I too, will be rooting for the Dolphins. I just don't think they have any shot at all. I don't I, – I, I, You know, it just kills me to say this because it's the Bills. Yeah. It's just not the Jets, right? And I, I'm rooting for the Giants. I love the Giants. Go Blue. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, great episode. Thanks for joining. Uh, for those that are watching, give us a like, give us a subscribe, and we'll see you soon. Take here. Here we go.